my book is out. That's all this is going to be about. I do want to give a little context for some of the pages because throughout the process of making this book, which is available now, it is public digitally. There's a link in the description for everybody. It's free. I'd rather you read the book than sit here and listen to me talk about the book. This is just kind of a thing for me because there were things that I did keep out of the book that I originally planned on putting in. Having this be my first book, there were things that I learned on how I want to go about my future books, for sure. For instance, I'm not going to allow others' opinions or what they want from the book to drive how I actually plan the book. There are paid there are sections in here that just have like the location of where I took the photos and nothing else and what I originally had were stories like describing how I took the photo what was happening on that day kind of adventure that took place to capture that moment and I just didn't add it in because I was told by a few individuals that nobody's gonna care to actually read the words they're just gonna focus on the photos. And a part of me kind of knew that, but I, I don't know. I definitely in the future will let myself, if I do another book like this one, where it's more of like personal experiences, I definitely will be allowing myself to add more context. All that aside, I do not have regrets at all about how this book was done. For it being my first book, I am super proud with how well it turned out. With all that being said, the whole idea of this book was I wanted it to kind of be like you're going on a drive with me. We start off in my hometown and as you read or as you go through the photos, it'll it's almost like you're driving with me to the end place. And I started it off, which I hope this kind of comes through, but I started it off talking about like my grandparents and my parents the people are what it's more focused on not necessarily the place itself but my home of circle of people and then at the end you will end in pittsburgh which is a place that i've said i've always wanted to move to but you will end in pittsburgh at rehabilitation physicians of pittsburgh it's not a spoiler at this point you could have already read it i've always talked very highly of them and the people there. Dr. Berg and Dr. Berthold are both, sorry, it's my brain spazzes whenever I add doctor for some reason because I always just call them Berg and Berthold. Dr. Berg and Dr. Berthold are both very knowledgeable. They're very professional and they are also very compassionate toward their patients. They are doctors who genuinely want to see their patient get better. They're not ones that you go to and then they just constantly are giving you meds that make you feel like trash just so that you keep coming back. Like they want you to succeed so they will do their best to guide you there. And a lot of the times, which is something that I really respect about how they treat their patients and how they go about their treatment, they help kind of guide the patient to have knowledge how to help themselves sometimes. I don't know if I worded that right. Instead of just you come in, you pay, you do the thing, and then you leave. And after you leave, you're left with no ideas. They will give you things to do on your own to continue the treatment so that once you leave your office, you're not left lost. Like they, they make sure you are well equipped on your journey. And I, that is something that I really respect about how they go about their, in their knowledge, in their um, profession, in however you want to go about it. I'm not good with words, okay? I'm, tr <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the best at words. I either don't know how to kind of untangle my brain, so then words kind of come out like a really slow type writer, and it just, d d d or <laughs> all of my tangled mess just kind of comes out at once so that it just continues unraveling and it just never stops and I don't know how to the brain just keeps pulling that yarn um so words aren't great I'm a I'm gonna 
say that now. But I definitely had, I knew with this book, I wanted it to have mentions of specific people um, in my life who have directly helped. And my grandparents specifically are and have been, even though they're not here physically anymore, they have been my rocks. Um, they are my, they hold me. These are their rings around my neck, always. But they, they are my, they hold, they ground me. They have been my, my anchors. So I knew I wanted it to kind of start with them. I mean, hell, this book wouldn't even be a thing if it weren't for my grandma buckle. She was the one who gave me the idea in 2016. So if it weren't for her, I would have never even like pursued this, most likely. With the idea being home, like the, the title being home and like a semicolon to kind of keep going, uh, reasons to keep going, I knew I wanted it to start with my people locally who are, who have been kind of my stable points. And I knew I wanted it to end with my people in Pittsburgh who have been my stable points since I've known them in 2016. I want to real quick go through a couple of the pages. I'm not gonna read the entire thing because you can read my book uh, in the link in the description. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I told you I'm terrible at this, but I do want to go through a couple of the pages because some of them, like I said, I left context out or I left stories out that I originally wanted to have in there. Figured I'll just tell you about it here. So if you watch this video, you get a little more, get a little more story to the story. So I'm gonna find a couple of the pages. I'm not gonna do all of them because not all of them had backstories. There were just a few that I wanted to touch on. Oh, there's the beach pages with my mom. So, one of my favorite memories that I have talked about before, I think on here, maybe not, but I've talked about it before with someone. When I was a kid, my mom and her friend would take me and then her friend's son, one of them, to the beach, and we would walk forever. Like, we would just go. They would look for beach glass, and... Me and the son would always walk ahead. And one of the days we picked up a bunch of beach glass and our moms were still way far behind us, just sitting there digging. So we just laughed and ended up taking our beach glass and making like a trail. <laughs> and we just like set them on rocks that were super obvious so that they would find them. And they were like, guys, you missed it. There was one like sitting perfectly and we were just we were just listening to them talk about these things and we were like, "Yep." Because we put them there. <laughs> but yeah, some of my favorite memories like with my mom specifically are at the beach with her. Like while she's looking at beach glass, I'll be taking photos or I sometimes would take like my ukulele or my guitar and I would just sit there and play while she dug for beach glass or like looked around. Let's see, oh, the bison page. This bottom one of the two bison, the two male bison um, fighting for dominance over the female, which the female is this side. I just smacked myself in the face. That photo of the two male bison fighting for dominance is one of the coolest photos I've ever captured in my career. My dad and I had gotten to this spot in Edinburgh. It was like seven in the morning and when we got there it was still super foggy, it was still dark, it was like rainy and just ugh. And after like an hour, hour and a half of just sitting there and we saw nothing, I was ready to leave. I was ready to give up. I was over it. I was done. And my dad being the patient man that he is, he was like, breathe, take a second, like relax. And he kind of like chilled me out. I put on some of my music just to listen to something at least to kind of keep me sane. And after another half hour, hour or so, he spotted the bison coming out. And I was like, oh, finally. But then we still had to sit there for them to get to a spot that I could take a photo of them at least. Um, and eventually they made their way out to a spot where I was able to get these shots. And I remember when I got the one of them fighting dom for dominance, it was like this big weight had lifted and I was like, oh, I did it. Like I got the shot that I've been wanting. I have like a bucket list of photos that I want to capture, places I want to go to take photos, like different things. 
and on it was a photo of bison fighting and I just I have always had it in my head so when I got that I was like oh I, I did it like I did that and when we got home I edited and I was so excited I just put in here that it was bison in Edinburgh <laughs> but there was so much that happened that day when I got those photos and it was genuinely one of the coolest moments in my career this photo of the Heinz little sign, I got that photo specifically that's in the book in 2016 on the day going down to the Children's Institute, which is why it's in here because honestly, I really like how I did it. If you go through the book, like as you're reading it and looking at these photos, you'll notice that colors are kind of matching. Um, there's like a color scheme to it. I had to base my current photos off of the colors that I used in 2016 because I didn't have the raw photos from there. I just had the edited versions. And at that time I edited, I like took out all the blue, I took out all the yellow and just left it with like red, orange, desaturated like crazy. So it was basically a black and white photo with like a weird pop of red or a subtle pop of color, kind of. Um, greens are super muted, which I still kind of edit that way sometimes, but I've kind of, I've adjusted my custom presets and everything to be a little bit more saturated. <laughs> but because of how I edited them at that time in my life, I had to match the colors. So there's a, also a little bit of context to editing wise. I don't have much to say about it, but this top photo of the bridge, that photo is also another photo that I'm excited to show people. I have the Squirrel Hill. Majority of these photos were taken during 2016. My occupational therapist while I was there, I don't know if she wants me to say her name, so I won't, but my OT from when I was uh, inpatient there, her and I used to go on walks to Starbucks. And I think we went like once or twice, but when we would go, I, she would have me take my camera to kind of have me focus on the camera while we walked. And they were not short walks. Like this, this building seemed ginormous to me as a kid. And we wouldn't just stay around the building. We would go around like the area and go a big rectangle and going around I would take my camera with and take photos and a lot of these photos from the Squirrel Hill pages are actually from those walks which is really cool to kind of look back and see like what did 16 year old Hal who was terrified of her life what what did she focus on and then I end on Dr. Berg Rehab Physicians of Pittsburgh which I've already kind of said a little bit that they're I respect them a lot, but I, I don't know. If it weren't for them, I may not be here uh, today. Whether it be physically, Dr. Berg helping me stay alive physically, or mentally kind of grounding me. During that time in 2022, actually, I talk a little bit about it in the book, but in 2022, when I was dying, <laughs> my body was being dramatic and dying on me. Tried to die a few times. I messaged him when I was transported to the bigger hospital in Pittsburgh and they were giving me life support. Um, it's, it's a life support treatment called TPN. And the night that I started that treatment, I messaged Dr. Berg to kind of keep him updated because I was updating him through my time there so that he was aware of what treatment was going on, what, what was happening, if I was still alive. And the night that I told him that I got TPN, or I was about to start TPN, I got a phone call, actually. It was like, it was not even 10 minutes, honestly, I don't think. My mom and I were sitting there trying to play cards to help my anxiety chill out. And I got a phone call from him, and he, he was just like, holy crap, <laughs> asked me how I was doing, told me to tell him and be honest, and I wasn't. I've, I've since, told him that I was not okay, that I had given up and was honestly at that point I was ready to kind of peace out. Him calling me and like my nieces and nephews calling me, it all just kind of helped me to keep going. It, there were specific people like my dad broke my heart knowing, it, it broke my heart knowing that he was at home lost while I was in Pittsburgh or while I was at the hospital. My sister, knowing how it was hurting her 
seeing my mom try and be so strong, but knowing how it was tearing her apart and how lonely of a situation she was in um, being there with me. I had reasons to keep going then. So him calling gave me hope, honestly, that like someone in that kind of medical world did care. Even to this day, like years later, if I need anything, I can call their office. And even the front desk ladies, bless their souls, I love them so much. They, um, if I need anything, they are willing to help with whatever, whether it be a physical issue that I'm having. I've called on call at like three in the morning and Berthold, Dr. Berthold, who was also mentioned on like the Children's Institute of Pittsburgh page, he has even answered and like helped me kind of figure out a plan until he could get a hold of uh, Berg to kind of call me back. So like physical issues, they have helped tremendously. My mental health problems and things that I've dealt with, things that I just recently started talking about, they all have been tremendously supportive and helpful in that aspect as well. I cannot stress enough how thankful I am that they are on my care team, that they are a part of my my little safety net. Each individual there have all helped me in some form um, throughout the years. And I, whenever I go for an appointment there, no matter what mood I'm in, they kind of meet me at the level where I'm at. They don't ever try and force me to be happy. They don't ever bum me out. They are, they meet me where I'm at. And that is what I need from a physician. That is what I need from a doctor's office. And they, they do that. And I'm very thankful for their impact on my life and for them being willing to just meet me where I'm at and help guide me where I need to be. Little sappy moment about rehab physicians of Pittsburgh, but that's where the book ends and they deserve the little shout out. So I am, I'm very thankful for them. I don't, like I said at the beginning, I don't do well with words and I'm starting to hit a point where I think I'll cry if I keep talking. So I need to just end the video. I do have in the end of the book a little thank you to these people, but I wanted to thank them here as well. My parents, Dr. Berg, my sister and her kids, Dylan, Kylie, Nora, and Erica, you guys are, whew, I told you I'm gonna cry. You guys are my anchors. You are my people. You not only helped me the last eight years with this book, but you have been there for me when everybody else who I expected to be there for me or should have been there for me tossed me to the side or labeled me as a basket case or thought that I was just a horrible human being and I cannot thank you enough. There are no words in my head that will ever be able to express my gratitude for you all. Very happy with how this whole process has gone, even with the little obstacles that weren't so little. This was a really cool experience to me and I am just very grateful for everyone involved before, during, and after. So go go to the link in my description uh so you can go read the book home my first book created by hal nicole which is me i've now talked for an hour and i'm just really excited and thankful and processing a lot and this is i don't know this is just really cool and i'm very thankful thanks <laughs>